Okay, guys, so we're going to try this again. Last night, I tried to record a video, and my lights kept going out. I live in an apartment building, and I don't know, something screwed with it. But anyway, it's probably a deterrent to keep people from staying in here. It says Michigan. It's a uh, cool, very cool 45 degrees right now here in Holland, Michigan. And, uh, well, it's a little chilly. But... Warmer than last night. I figured I'd try to get out here. Um, I've got less stuff plugged in tonight, so hopefully that'll help me out a little bit. Um, on the front of getting a new studio area, hopefully come June, I'll have some stuff in the works going on there, so update on that. Um, by the way, I'm back. Long hiatus. I know. I apologize for my absence, but I uh, had a lot of stuff going on, and I uh, just didn't have time. Guys, didn't have time. So... But we're going to try and get back into this thing. I want to try and at least get one or two sticks done every month. Get something up here for you guys so you can check it out. Um, hopefully I still got some followers. So without further ado, let's get into tonight's episode. Alright, so it's night. We are going to be reviewing the Factory Smokes Maduro by Drew Estate. Uh, this was gifted to me by my good friend, Robert Labash. Thank you, Rob. Um, he says they're really good. Everything I've heard about Factory Smokes seems to say that they're a very good cigar. So, And they're supposed to be cheaper. Um, so we'll see how this turns out. A um, little bit of homework for you guys. Didn't find a whole lot on them. Um, like I said, it's supposed to be a, a more affordable line from Drew Estate. Something that's like an everyday smoker or a good yard gar. Something you can just kind of take along with you and kind of smoke at your leisure. Um, so it is from Drew Estate, like I said. Um, it's supposed to be mild to medium body. Um, it has a dark oily Maduro wrapper, obviously. Um, we'll check and see if we got any shoe shine on that. In just a minute. Um, the binder is Indonesian and they didn't list anything for the filler. Um, but if I had to guess, I would probably guess Nicaraguan. Judging by the smell, it's kind of got that Nicaraguan um, scent in there. So we'll, we'll see. Um, so the expected flavors, they say, would be espresso, dark chocolate, and black pepper. So we'll see if that holds true as well. Um, this is available in looks like five sizes. Um, so you have the Churchill, which is a 7x50 for $36, and that's for a bundle of $25. Um, you've got the Gordito, which is a 6x60, $43 for a bundle of $25. A Robusto, or Robusto, as Rob likes to call them, um, which is the size I have here today, the Robusto. 5-inch uh, by 54 ring gauge for $32 uh, for a bundle of 25 And then the Toro, which is actually my personal favorite size for my cigars, um, which is the 6 by 52 And that is $34 and some change for a bundle of 25 I don't really know why I like the Toro's burner. Um, a lot of the Rocky Patel sticks that I get, especially like the Decades and the uh, Anniversary sticks, um, I, I always seem to get the Toro size just because it gives you just a little bit more. I mean, this is a 5x54, Toro is 6x52, so a slightly smaller ring gauge, um, and you get an extra inch on there. 
I don't know, maybe that extra inch adds a little something extra. I'll have to ask the ladies. <laughs> so, um, so these do come in bundles, not boxes. You won't find these in a nice little cedar box or anything. Um, they do come in bundles. Um, very typical of what you see with like factory rejects and stuff like that. However, Drew Estate does mention in their site that these are not uh, rejects or repacks or rebundles by any means. This is a stick that was blended to be what it is um, and affordable. So that kind of tells me that the whole idea behind the fancy dancy boxes and all this extra packaging stuff, sometimes you guys, you might actually be paying for the packaging. So just keep that in mind. Um, sometimes good things do come in small packages and we're about to find out. So as I'm smelling the wrapper here, you get a hint of sweetness and there's like a musty, it's almost like a musty, like a floral smell. Um, I would compare it to like wet hay or wet straw kind of. Kind of interesting. The foot's very sweet smelling, sweet tobacco. It's got the kind of that same uh, musty kind of uh, funkiness to it. So um, the wrapper does look semi-oily. Uh, my humidor was actually a little dry. We were sitting right about 63, 64% humidity the last couple days. Um, I've added some more stuff in there now and we're right back up to where we need to be. So. Temperature's been holding pretty steady lately. Um, it is winter time, so it's a little cooler out. Um, I did move it out of my closet, which is where I had it, and I've got it out in the living room now. Um, but come summertime, I'll probably end up putting it right back in the closet. So um, just a lot of humidity and uh, the temperature fluctuations. I just have a little uh, desktop humidor, so it's not anything fancy. I don't have a new air or any of that fancy stuff. So not yet, anyway. So working on that. Um, so let's go ahead and give this a cut and a light, and uh, we'll start our journey. Get my nice little ashtray over here. I like the, uh, Mr. Rob made me a nice little stand, but it's a nice little ashtray that I got for free at the B&M one day. Um, has a has a rest on it already so I tend to use that one when I'm outside um, which is typically always unless I'm in the vehicle or what have you but I tend to use this one just because it's here it's it's readily available it's got the ashtray and the rest on it so um, let's get this cut now typically I just use a straight cut um, and that's only because the way I like to cut I'm literally only taking off that top little sliver of the cap. There's no tobacco in there. That's just the cap. Um, that's interesting because you can actually see on the fibers here where the glue was that they used to put the cap together. So, um, But I just do that, and it's nice. I mean, sometimes you get a little tobacco sticking out, you know, like that. Um, but I don't mind that. What this does for me personally is it allows me to uh, smoke usually about halfway um, and then I usually do a recut, a purge, um, and kind of bring those flavors back into perspective a little bit. Um, for me, at least, it seems a lot of the cigars I smoke, when I start getting about halfway, um, the flavors start getting a little muddled. Um, and now that the, you know, the head of it's all uh, saturated, more or less, with, um, with the, the oils and stuff coming through the cigar and your saliva... Um, that tends to muddle up the flavor a little bit. So I always leave that little bit there. That way I can do a recut, uh, purge it, and kind of get that back to square one again. I used to do V-cut. I used to do punch. I used to dabble in a lot of different things. Um, depending on the cigar, if it's like a flat head or something, you know, I'll definitely use a punch on that still. Um, but I've kind of shied away from the V-cut. Um, and again, with the straight cut, like if you get a torpedo, I like the torpedoes a lot. Um, that also allows you to get multiple cuts on the same head without having to uh, mess up the cigar too much, uh, destroy the structural integrity, if you will. Um, so if you give me just a second here, I got to readjust my flame. I just refilled my lighter yesterday in anticipation that I'd be out here yesterday smoking a different cigar, but that didn't happen. So today, 
We're doing this one. I just use a nice little vertigo. Sorry about that. Uh, I just use a nice little vertigo. Um, quad torch. Um, so if I'm going to smoke something smaller, I, I just, I've got a couple of small single jet ones, but uh, this is the one I usually use for, you know, 50 gauge or higher. Um, so. Cold draws um, kind of loose. There's a lot of airflow through it. Got a uh, nice hints of sweet tobacco. Slight little tinge of black pepper there on the tongue. I think this one will smoke just fine. I don't think I'll need to do any draw holes or anything fancy like that. It's not super tight uh, on the packing. There is a couple little loose spots in there, so that could be why. And it's definitely a light cigar. Um, some cigars are kind of heavy. This one's got a little bit of buoyancy to it, we'll say. But let's get this fired up, and uh, I'll stop rambling, and we'll kind of get into the review here. For those of you who might be new to this, this actually took me a while to master, um, and again, to each his own. But I like to try and heat the head up just a little bit before I actually light it. Especially now with it being so cold out here, um, the wrapper tends to dry out a little quicker in the dry air and uh, it could cause some cracks, some uneven burning, stuff like that. So, um, But typically anyway, I try to heat the head up just a little bit before I go ahead and torch it. Um, it just seems to me like that offers a little bit of an even burn, a little more of an even burn rather. I'm very meticulous when it comes to the burn on my cigars. Um, so if you see me touching it up here and there, that's not uncommon for me. And I like this lighter in particular because it has this nice little mirror in the end of it. So I can just go like this and I, I can see if it's lit all the way. That's kind of cool, right? So we got a good nice light, nice even light on there. Um, I don't know if you can really tell or not. It's kind of hard to get this camera to focus sometimes, but it's pretty even. And right up front, even without a full retrohale, you kind of get that black pepper in there. It's not super spicy black pepper, um, and it's not overbearing. Just enough to know, yeah, that's black pepper in there. Um, and you also get some of those sweet tobacco kind of notes in there as well. Definitely a very light draw. Um, and then on that retro hail, the, the pepper does, it is definitely a solid black pepper. Um, it does heat up the nostrils and the forehead a little bit on that retro hail. Um, so this is going to be one to be careful with that with. Uh, sometimes I tend to get a little overwhelmed with the pepper. Um, and even as I'm talking now, I can feel it starting to kind of coat the roof of my mouth a little bit. So this will be interesting. We'll see where this takes us. Not bad, though. Not bad. So far, so good. Um, definitely got that pepper, and I'm getting a couple little flighty hints of like a leathery, um, like a leathery cedar kind of note, and then obviously the sweet tobacco. Not tasting any of the chocolate or the espresso yet, um, but if I know anything about Drew Estate, usually you got to get well within the first third there to get your uh, your first kind of transition to the actual flavors. Um, Typically, the the front ends of their cigars, um, I don't know if it's how they roll it um, or the way they put the tobacco in, uh, but it usually takes about that first third, and then you really start getting into the actual richness of the cigar. So, looking forward to that. And then, although this is an oily wrapper, 
um, or semi-oily, like I had explained about the, um, let me get that out of the way here real quick. Like I had explained about the humidor being a little dry the last couple of days. Um, I could tell this is going to be a little bit of a dry smoke. Um, and then that pepper as well, now that it's starting to kind of coat my tongue and uh, the roof of my mouth, roof of my mouth rather, um, I can tell I'm definitely going to want something to drink with this. So luckily I planned ahead and I had brought in a libation with me. Tonight we're going to be drinking the Sierra Nevada Limited Edition. Um, this is their 40 year hoppy anniversary ale. Um, it's 65 IBUs and 6.0 ABV. Um, so definitely not a powerhouse beer, um, but I have had a couple of these. I bought a six pack the other day. I was at the store. It was the last one on the shelf. It seemed like an omen, right? So I went ahead and grabbed it. Pretty good beer. Um, it's not super heavy, like I said. Uh, it's only 6% alcohol. Um, so it's not going to get you, you know, wasted by any means. Um, but it will put a little bit of a hand on your head there. You drink a few of them at least. Um, it does have a nice hoppiness to it. Um, if you don't like hops, you're not going to like this beer. Um, I'm a big fan of IPAs and hoppy stuff like that. So um, this is like right up my alley, right in my wheelhouse. Smells like a nice lager. It actually smells very comparable to like a Budweiser, like a Sam Adams. It's got a little bit of like a fruity citrus note on it. Um, which is what I would expect from Sierra Nevada. A lot of their stuff, even um, like the Torpedo and stuff like that, it's a little bit heavier of an IPA. It does have that fruitiness aspect to it. Just goes down nice and clean and crisp. And then that hoppy note kind of picks up on the tail end of it. So I think that'll be a good pairing for this cigar, especially with the pepper in it. Oh yeah, it's rolling pretty good. Got a pretty nice even burn on this one today. So um, I'm going to sit back, stoke on this for a while, um, sip on my beer a little bit, jot down my notes, and um, I'll be back. Hold tight. <laughs> So we're pretty well into what I would call the first third of this cigar. Um, and so far, um, we've got like that leathery cedar thing going on that I had mentioned. Um, the pepper is kind of trailed off. Um, you still get a lot of it in the retrohale. Um, but as far as just the regular draw, it kind of sits on the back of your tongue. Um, almost not even present anymore, which is interesting. Nice peppery up front, and then it kind of uh, tapered off into the back, if you will. Um, I'm starting to get some notes of like a floral hint in there, um, kind of like, not like I had mentioned before, like the wet hay floral, um, almost like a green kind of grassy floralness uh, in there. Um, and then obviously the leather cedar is very prominent. Um, in this last couple of puffs here, it's actually transitioned into like a creamy cedar. It looks like a lot of smoke output on um, the camera, but um, just resting. The cigar doesn't have a terrible amount of uh, smoke output on it. Um, the longer it rests, obviously, the less smoke output it has on it. On the draw, um, you do get a nice draw from it. It's still a very loose draw, um, a little looser than I would prefer, um, but not terrible. Um, so it's kind of a loose draw. Um, the ash seems to be fairly well compact. Um, looking at it, I can kind of see a few different layers in there. Um, so that tells me it might end up being a little flakier. But for right now, it's holding pretty steady. Um, we've still got a pretty good burn going. Tad bit of a coastline, but not terrible. Um, let's see here. Um, yeah, so the floral finish um, going into the first third here. Um, like it's kind of interesting, right? Cause like I said, this is, it seems very light. The cigar seems really, really light, like weight wise. It's not as heavy as I would imagine it being just from experience of other cigars. Um, and pairing with the beer, the 40th anniversary ale, which is very good. Um, the combination of the two, the cigar with the beer, almost the cedar notes 
and the floral note kind of mixes in with that hoppiness of the ale. Um, and it's interesting. It's actually pulling out a little bit more of like an oaky type of finish for me um, when I sip a little bit of the beer. So definitely interesting. I've never had a cigar beer uh, mixture where they kind of complemented themselves very well. So I think I might have hit it right on the button this time. Um, unfortunately, this beer is limited edition. So after this year, it won't be available anymore. But, you know. So that pepper is still very predominant on the retro hail. Um, still kind of hits the nasal passages um, and kind of up into your nose, forehead kind of deal. Um, still that nice black pepper though. It's not like a spicy pepper by any means, um, but it's enough to let you know, hey, a little bit of pepperiness here. Um, and on that retro too, it kind of brings out that floral note that I'm talking about. Kind of comparable, I would say, if you were burning wet sticks. Um, is kind of what I'm getting here. Um, it's like a wet cedar kind of uh, note in there. So, uh, so far so good. I'm liking it. Um, it's definitely something that I could have one or two a day. Um, it could definitely be easily be a daily smoker. Um, definitely would make a good yard guard depending on what you're doing. Um, I mean, we're well into the first third here. And... Uh, I'm guessing it's probably going to last me about an hour, maybe, if I smoke it all the way down, um, which is fairly uh, rare for me. A lot of the cigars I get are a little heavier, um, and I don't smoke them all the way down. But on occasion, and this might be one of those occasions, we shall see. Um, I really like the band. Um, so it's just like a nice glossy black. It says Factory Smokes by Drew Estate. Premium Handmade. It's got a nice red border around the outside. Um, the signature Drew Estate logo. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's kind of dark over here, but signature Drew Estate logo, and then it says Maduro. So um, it definitely has all the um, the signs of being like a like a factory reject or a cheaper cigar. Um, but I think with this one, you might actually get what you're paying for uh, without having to pay for all that fancy packaging and whatnot that we had talked about. The camera just lost focus. Yeah, there we go. Um, that was an ash drop. The ash just dropped off all over my lap. That's okay. I'm used to that, right? Um, so that was probably a good solid inch or two of ash um, before it actually fell off by itself. Slight cone shape in there, um, which means I could be smoking it just a little faster than I should be. Um, that could also be partially because, like I said, the humidor is a little dry, um, so it doesn't have as much moisture in it, which would also uh, be a good indication of why the wrapper wasn't as oily as I said it might be. Back to the shoe shine factor. I see no shoe shine on this. Um, for those of you who are new, don't know what shoe shine is, or maybe you've never heard the term before, um, it's kind of a term I've adapted from other reviewers. Um, Typically what you see with especially Maduro cigars mainly on the tip of the head where your flame is or where, where the hot, where the heat's coming from, um, if there's shoe shine, which is an additive, um, whether it be a color additive, a flavor additive that they put on, that they actually paint it or they dip the cigar in um, to cover the entire wrapper with to make it look darker. Um, so that's where you can get like a lot of, you can have like a Habano wrapper um, but it might be considered a Maduro cigar because it's the darker color. Um, some companies do that. I have yet to see a Drew Estate cigar that has that. So um, I'm very well pleased in the fact that this is a true, what we call a true Maduro um, wrapper on this one. I was getting a little worried there. Um, I was talking... And as I was talking, I could see the um, the smoke get less and less and less on the uh, on the foot there. I just wanted to give it a quick puff to make sure it was still going, and it's it's still holding pretty steady on the heat. So um, that's good to me. That tells me that it's packed very well, um, that the inside's not uh, super loose. Um, so that loose draw, and like if I feel right here, it's very spongy. 
Um, so that might be a, a spot where I don't really want to set it down too much at. That might burn out fairly quickly. Um, and the whole cigar seems just a little spongy now too. Um, so it's a little loosely packed in there, um, but that might, again, be part of the reason why they're so affordable. A little less tobacco in them. They're not packed as much. It's not going to smoke as long. Um, so that's what makes it a good daily smoker, right? Um, but the way this one's burning, I would say, I mean, if you had a half hour lunch break, you could probably make it fairly well through a good majority of this before having to put it out. You can't always tell on camera how big the stick is, um, but just kind of put it into perspective for you. Between the end of the band here and um, where we've made our cut, it's about an inch. Um, so on the later side of that, you, you can see I've got about two inches left here. Um, being that it's a five inch stick, I believe it's a five inch, right? Yeah, the Robusto is a five inch. Um, so you've got an inch here, you've got two left. So I mean, that means the first third, we've already gone through two. So I would say we're working on, you know, getting towards halfway point here, um, getting towards the second third of the cigar. Um, right now, the uh, leather hints, cedar hints are kind of taking over. You still got that black pepper finish kind of on the back of the tongue and obviously through the retrohale. Um, that floral notes kind of escaping now. Um, and that might have just been something in that particular spot in the tobacco. But definitely still a good cedar note in there, um, which is the predominant flavor now. The cedar note, black pepper, and I did just pick up a little bit more of that spicy floralness kind of on the retro hail. So um, interesting, very interesting. I'm going to smoke on this a little bit more, guys. Um, take a few more sips of this beer here to kind of wash down some of that pepper. Um, keep going on my notes a little bit. I'll be back. All right, hold tight. to the band on this one um, and that actually gave us our second ash drop again dropped in my lap the focus up again okay again just dropped in my lap um, terrible timing what can I say um, so we are we are getting down to what I would call the end of this one um, it is a very decent smoke I would definitely say that you're getting what you pay for um, especially after I went through kind of did the math you know going from bundle to per stick cost um, I'm kind of thinking here that the B&M is going to upsell you just a little bit um, for buying singles. So with this particular cigar, I would almost buy an entire bundle at these rates. Again, these rates are coming from online. Um, for the life of me, I can't remember the site. I was just on there too. Um, I can't remember the site, but I'm fairly well sure you could find these just about anywhere, guys. Um, so definitely something that if you like it, um, buy the bundle because you're going to get way more for your money. Um, so going back into that, uh, looking at cost per stick, which I simply took the bundle cost divided by 25 cigars because it comes in a 25 cigar bundle. Um, you're looking anywhere from $1.50 to $2 a stick. Not bad. Um, I don't remember exactly how much... Mr. Rob said he paid for this one, um, but if I had to guess, I'd say it's somewhere between three and five dollars. Five dollars is typically like your usual uh, low price point at the local B and M's around us here in Michigan. Um, I have seen some as low as like three fifty, especially in like a Drew Estate blend, um, just kind of like their everyday average Joe uh, factory lines and stuff like that. So um, I mean that you might get it for three fifty, you might get it for five. Um, but it's definitely worth the bundle, right? So a bundle of these Robustos, 25 of them, is only $32 and some change. Like, that's pretty decent. Um, and even if I wanted to step it up, like I said, I'm more of a fan of the Toro. If I wanted to step it up the size of the Toro, that's only $2 more. So, <coughs> pardon me. Um, so for me, it would almost be worth buying the entire bundle um, since this is a very good stick. Although I know they have a couple other ones other than the Maduro. Um if I remember correctly, I'm sure there's probably a Connecticut and a Habano. If they have a Corojo, I'd be very interested in trying the Corojo. Um, stuff like that. Maybe a Sumatra blend would be nice. Um, I did find out a little bit more on the filler. Um, so the only thing I could find really, um, the the wrapper, they just say it's a Maduro. It's still kind of non-descriptive. They don't really say what kind of tobacco it is, just that it's a Maduro. 
Obviously, we know from the lack of shoe shine, it's a true Maduro leaf. So the color you're seeing on the outside of the cigar, this nice, dark, chocolatey, kind of oily looking wrapper, that is the true color of the leaf, which is very nice. That is a very aesthetically appealing leaf, um, especially to wrap a cigar in. Um, but the filler is a mix of Indonesian long filler. Um, so the binder filler, probably the same tobacco. Um, their kind of thought with that was that, I guess, Indonesian tobacco has a very um, high flavor point for a very low production cost. Um, so it's a very affordable, which kind of brings us right back around to why the bundles are so cheap, why the sticks are so cheap, um, but yeah, you still get a good flavor out of it. So right now, um, that pepper is kind of trailing off even further. I've kind of got it lingering in the back of my tongue a little bit, still getting a little bit on the retrohale, um, but at this point, um, right before the band here, um, you're looking at a little bit of a deeper cedar note, um, maybe just a tad little bit of like oakiness, um, but the creaminess has definitely gone away. Um, there is still a touch of like a floral hint on it, like a spicy floral on the retro, which is kind of just a combination of, I think, the cedar, excuse me, and the, um, the pepper kind of mingling together, and that's where you get that kind of spicy floral note. Um, second ash drop, like I said, right before the band, um, so watch out for that, definitely. Um, it seems to be, I don't know, fairly solid ash, um, but it did flake a little bit. So just be wary of that. Um, if you do pick up one of these, keep it close to the ashtray. Don't be like me and get it all over your lap. Um, so for those of you who are new, and I haven't done one of these in a while, um, so I have changed, I do a scoring uh, for each cigar that I smoke when I do a review. Um, I have changed it up a little bit. There used to be five categories. Um, but I've kind of combined two because it just makes a little more sense that way. So my first category is price. So I'm looking at the price point. How much does it cost per stick? How much is it to get like a bundle or a box? Are you getting what you paid for? Are you paying for the name? That kind of a thing. Um, and each of these categories are rated one to five based on how I feel about this particular cigar. Again, my opinion, not necessarily saying, okay, this is a really good one for you. Just saying, hey, it might be worth trying. So... <clears throat> price point. Um, I would give it a five just because, like I said, they're very cheap, very affordable, um, and you are, I feel, getting what you pay for. Uh, even if you're paying the upscale price of $5 a stick, um, you know, I, I think that's fair for this. I mean, it's a nice longer smoke. Um, I've been going at it now for about, well, a little over an hour. Uh, about halfway point would be about an hour. A bit of tobacco on the tongue there. Um, but I feel even at $5 a stick, this is a pretty good bargain because A, you're getting good flavor. Uh, B, the longevity of it, it's going to last you a little while, at least an hour, right? Because we've been going at this for at least an hour now. Um, the burn was very good and all that stuff. So I think you're getting what you pay for in that one. So I'm going to give it a five on the price. Construction is my second and almost the most important uh, category when it comes to a cigar, I feel. Um, so construction covers everything from how well the wrapper is, how well the cap was done, how well the burn is going, um, because sometimes the way it's rolled and the kind of stuff that they put into it um, can affect your burn a lot. Um, so I'm going to give construction a five. Never had to do a relight. Actually didn't have to do a purge. Didn't have to do a recut. Um, just because, you know, uh, puffing on it, the cap is starting to loosen up just a little bit. But, you know, that's going to happen. If I'm not careful here, I might have to relight it if I get talking too much. Um, so the construction, I'm going to give it a five. It was very well constructed from what I can see. Um, like I said, it was a little loose packed. Um, but I think that kind of helps the air kind of move through the Indonesian tobacco. Kind of keep it going a little bit. Um, and it might deliver more of that flavor to you. I feel like if this cigar in particular was packed a little tighter, you might not get the um, the floral notes and the cedar notes and stuff, the nice light airy notes that I've been kind of getting throughout. So construction gets a five. Flavor. Flavor is the one that I've kind of compiled the two categories. I used to do flavor and um, complexity as separate categories. However, I feel like those are kind of one and the same. Um, so this cigar has very few flavors, um, and the complexity was kind of what I would call even, right? So as we kind of transition through the thirds of the stick, 
um, the complexity kind of changed, right? So the complexity just kind of gauges like, okay, am I getting a bunch of flavors at one time or is it kind of spread out a little bit or does it kind of come in stages? I would say this one kind of came in stages. Um, when I say the word complexity, to me, that means a lot of different flavors all at one time. Um, so I'm going to give this one a three on flavor slash complexity um, just because it's very uh, average flavors. So the cedar, the floral, the pepper, very average flavors, and they weren't all there at one time. It wasn't super complex. I didn't get the dark chocolate like they said. I didn't get the espresso like they said. Um, but again, that's just me. Other people's palates might be different. Um, so I'm going to give it a three, so average on flavor. And then my overall experience for this stick just kind of tells you, okay, was it worth smoking? Would I buy it again? That kind of a thing. I'm going to go ahead and give that a four. I would definitely buy one of these again. And like I said, if I did, I would definitely buy it in the bundle. More for your money that way, I feel. Um, so now what I do is I take up those four uh, numbers, add them up, get an average. So this is going to get an average rating of 4.25 out of five. So 4.25, definitely in the higher range of cigars that I would say definitely try it. Um, if you're looking for an everyday smoke, this might be the one for you. Um, like I said, I've only tried the Maduro. I haven't tried the other flavors. I'm not exactly sure how many other flavors there are, but I would definitely be interested in trying those. Sorry, blends, not flavors. Um, different blends. Um, so definitely going to have to dive a little bit deeper into this factory smokes line um, and see what else they have to offer. But as far as the Maduro goes, guys... I mean, it almost got a five-star rating on my end. So this is definitely worth trying. Um, if you're out at a local B&M or if you happen to see them online, you say, hey, maybe I'll give it a shot. I definitely encourage you to do so. Um, so, yeah, and we're still going on the first beer. So, I mean, it's not like a terribly long smoke either. Now, if you got a Churchill or something, you know, you, you might be sitting for a little longer. But So, that all being said, give it a shot. Uh, feel free to let me know what you think and uh, keep on smoking, friends. All right, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to relight this now that I think it's gone out, kind of finish it up, finish up my beer, head inside, get a little grub, and uh, hang out with the fam for a little bit. So uh, you guys take it easy. I'm going to stay cool right here in Michigan. Hopefully, if not too long, it's already February. Hopefully, it warms up a little bit, right? And then we can break out the shorts and sunglasses and go chill on the deck instead of in the garage. All right, guys. You have a good one.